All right, folks, I, uh, I'm making a, I always say a quick video, and it never turns out to be quick, but making this video, I, yesterday I had listened to a quote-unquote debate between Dr. Michael Brown and Jerry Johnson on the subject of Charles Finney. Was he a heretic, or was he a brother in the Lord? Let, let me play this first quick clip to get us started. Uh, here we go. I say Charles Finney was a powerful evangelist used by God. My guest says Charles Finney was a false prophet used by the devil. Who's right? Okay. So, they had their little, you know, hour-long debate or whatever it was on this subject. Now, when I first heard about this, I was very, very nervous. Meaning, I'm, 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 I'm looking at Michael Brown. I mean, granted, he's an Arminian, but let's set the Arminian Calvinist thing aside for this video, I was nervous because I'm thinking, how on earth could an Arminian, or anybody for that matter, be defending a Pelagian? Because Charles Finney was a Pelagian. Now, how could he be defending a Pelagian and calling him a brother? So I was just very like, w I, this, I can't believe this. However, my, my, my concern, my nervousness, if you will, started to subside a bit when I first started listening to the debate because it sounded, at least the first portion of the debate, it sounded as though Michael Brown's arguments were that he was trying to argue that, well, Finney wasn't really a Pelagian. He did preach the gospel, and hence the reason I can call him a brother in the Lord. Um, now, but that was short-lived because later on, as, as the debate continued on and Jerry Johnson started pointing out how, uh, he quotes, quoting from, from Charles Finney where Finney was denying original sin, denying all three acts of imputation, Adam's sin to us, our sin to Christ, and Christ's righteousness to us. All three acts of imputation, uh, denying substitutionary atonement. Um, he Jerry was pointing these out, giving quotes from Charles Finney where he was denying these fundamental tenets of the Christian faith. Original sin, substitutionary atonement, the three acts of imputation, and so forth. And so what ended up happening is when, after Jerry was pointing this stuff out, Michael Brown's argumentation started to change a little bit. He started to go in a different direction. And, well, let's listen to the clip first, and then I'll comment on it. <clears throat> it's about 60 seconds, so listen to this. And we you can, are, uh, because that is an Arminian belief there. No, no, I'm, I'm talking I'm, about Bible. Jerry, I'm asking yeah. you, where in the Bible? Okay. I didn't even make that statement in, in the video. But I'm asking I you. Even, I, I'm I'm okay. I'm I'm sola scriptura. Okay. I'm a Jew following Jesus. Yep. Church canons have interest to me, but ultimately it's it's scripture that's make or break for me. I agree. Finney's preaching. Okay. Finney's mm -hmm. preaching. His messages where he where over this is and this is the fruit of his evangelism. The messages that he preaches call people to repentance, hold them universally responsible and universally guilty before God with no possible hope of reformation in themselves because of their sin. So in the, isn't that the gospel message? Where does the gospel message require an evangelist to say that you sin because of original sin? I don't see that anywhere in the New Testament preaching. I so are you responsible denying original sin then? No, I'm simply <laughs> I'm why, talking why, about the ministry of an evangelist because you because, because you're agree. calling a guy a heretic, you're damning him to hell. You're saying Brother, he preached not, another it, gospel. It, I'm looking at his gospel message, and it's a I, biblical I, message to repent yeah, I, I, for I, 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 guilty I, I, for God. I, 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 All right. Now the gist of what Michael Brown was saying here was when I see what he preached, calling people to repentance and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the gospel message. Thus, he's not a heretic in hell. But what Michael Brown is failing to see here is that all Pelagians say that. All Pelagians say that everybody needs to repent, that, that they need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That, but that's not what's in question. And that's what Michael Brown fails to see. And furthermore, now this is now this is actually where this is this is uh, 
this is what's creating the concern here, uh, serious concern, very disturbing, is that what Michael Brown said in that clip was basically, uh, if you have to you know, rewind, go back and listen to it real quick, he was saying after Jerry was pointing out that uh, Charles Finney denied original sin and all three acts of imputation, Brown's response was, when we look in Scripture, where do we see any of the evangelists, say in the book of Acts, okay? Where do we see any of the apostles and the disciples in their evangelical endeavors? Where do we see any of them in their proclamation of the gospel saying, you sin because of original sin. You have this imputed guilt, from Adam. Now, mind you, Michael Brown is not denying original sin. Even in that clip, when Jerry asked him, do you deny original sin? He says no. But Michael's argument was, in their e evangelical endeavors, they never mention original sin. Thus, we don't need to mention original sin when we uh, uh, evangelize and so forth. Now, what Michael's doing is... is, is Basically just ignoring what Charles Finney taught and believed, that he denied original sin, substitutionary atonement, all three acts of imputation. He denied all of this. And so Michael Brown is just kind of like washing over that, just kind of sweeping that under the rug because, well, Finney called people to repent from their sins and believe on Jesus. So, and since scripture nowhere shows you know, in their evangelistic endeavors where they said, you uh, you sin because of original sin, therefore it's not an important doctrine. You don't really need to believe in original sin. It's not a, it's not a fundamental doctrine. The imputation, three acts of imputation, it's not a, it's not a necessary doctrine. Substitutionary atonement, it's not a necessary doctrine. That's the gist of what Michael Brown is saying because, again, they didn't do it in Scripture. Sure, Scripture teaches original sin. It teaches the acts of imputation, but they didn't they didn't preach that in their 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 the their evangelical sermons. So it's not really all that necessary. But this kind of actually reminds me of how the the Muslims argue against the Christians. They say, "Where does Scripture, uh, you, you know, when the Muslim comes to you, where does Christ Himself anywhere say that I am God?" worship me. See, Christ never says, I am God, worship me. Thus, Christ isn't God and we don't have to worship him. That's the kind of argumentation that Michael Brown is using here. Well, Peter didn't discuss original sin, so therefore it's not important. We don't need to worry about that. It's not a, a fundamental of the Christian faith. That's, that's the kind of argument that he's giving. Now, <clears throat> I got to wonder, does Michael Brown, for instance, since they didn't preach original sin per se in their um, uh, uh, evangelism, their gospel preaching, I got to wonder, did they, did, they, did they also say, hey, when they were given the gospel to people, did they say, hey, Jesus was born of a virgin? Did they say, hey, God is a trinity? Did they, did they mention um, how many books in the Bible there are? You know, you got to believe in 66 books because there's going to be 66 books that are inspired and canonized. And if you don't believe that, did they, did they mention these doctrines when they presented the gospel? No, they didn't. But question for Michael Brown. Would Michael Brown accept the profession of faith from anyone who denied the virgin birth? Would he accept the profession of faith from anyone who denied the triune nature of God? Would he accept the profession of faith from anybody who denied, let's say, the Pauline epistles and say they were not inspired? And as a matter of fact, Paul was of the devil? Because remember, in their evangel when we read through Acts, they never mentioned uh, uh, 66 books. They never mentioned the Trinity per se. They didn't say you have to believe in the Trinity to be saved. You know, that wasn't part of the gospel message. And, you know, the, the virgin birth wasn't either. I mean, they just said repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't mention the virgin birth. So we don't need to believe that or preach that or teach it or anything else. Would Michael Brown accept the profession of faith from anybody who denied these other tenets of the Christian faith? 
I seriously doubt he would. But for some reason, with Charles Finney, it doesn't matter that Finney denied original sin, denied uh, substitutionary atonement, three acts of imputation, and so forth. That That's just, you know, that's neither here nor there. Who cares? He told people to repent. Therefore, he's a brother in the Lord. Well, Mormons tell people to repent. Jehovah's Witnesses tell people to repent. Why don't we just accept them as well? I mean, this is absolutely ludicrous what Michael Brown is saying. I mean, never mind the fact that Charles Finney is, 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 has probably done more damage to the church than any atheist, um, considering all his BS about, about the altar call, which was called the ancient seat, uh, the anxious seat. You know, he, ba he invented the altar call and, uh, how many people have been damned to hell because they think they got saved because they walked down the aisle and, and, or raised their hand or something to that effect. Um, uh, never mind that stuff, but you, you gotta see the importance of this. This is, this is crazy. I cannot believe I'm hearing this from Michael Brown. Um, uh, and you know, in a certain sense, I, I, I'm not surprised. I, does it surprise me that an Arminian is, is arguing this way? Really? No, it doesn't surprise me in that sense. But furthermore, the last thing I want to point out is I am curious because since James White and Dr. Brown, White and Brown. James White and Dr. Brown have been buddies lately, and I don't say that derogatory or sarcastically or anything, uh, but they've been, you know, chumming it up lately. Um, I, I gotta wonder how Dr. White's gonna respond to this, because Dr. White, James White does believe that Pelagianism, the denial of original sin, is a damnable heresy. So I gotta wonder how James White is gonna respond to this. How is he gonna handle this? And is, is, is I, you know, I have much respect for James White. I've learned a lot from him. So I, I, you know, I don't say anything negative against him, but, but I'm concerned because, you know, sometimes you get buddy up with people, uh, not just in apologetic stuff, but anything, just in your personal life, you get buddies with people. And then when, when they err, it's like, sometimes you don't say something, you don't do anything about it because, well, they're my friend and I don't want to stir up any trouble. You, you know how it goes. So I'm kind of curious how Dr. White's going to handle this because this is big. This is like serious business here. Okay. Michael Brown just said original sin, imputation, all of that stuff is not necessary to the gospel. It's not necessary because, hey, Peter didn't preach it at, at Pentecost. That's what Michael Brown's saying. Those are, those are just secondary issues. That's like, that's like arguing about, you know, premillennial or amillennial. That's just, that's just, you know, sub issues that we don't really need to concern ourselves about. This is big business, people. The, the implications that come from denying original sin, the three acts of imputation, is a denial of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a denial of the gospel. If our sins were not imputed to Jesus Christ and Christ's righteousness not imputed to us, you have just rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ and you are under the anathema of Paul in Galatians 1. And here we have Michael Brown saying, that's just not relevant. We don't need to worry about that because Peter or whoever never mentioned original sin or imputation when they preached the gospel. They didn't mention the virgin birth, the Trinity, and a whole host of other doctrines either that Michael Brown would agree are essential to the faith. So, John, I try to testify, friend of mine, many of you know him, is going to try to call into the dividing line this week if he can, if White's taking calls. We'll see how it goes and see uh, what Dr. White has to say. And I hope, oh Lord God, I pray that White comes out strong against this. This is serious business. This ain't just like, well, oh, oh, you became, you know, a, a, a cessationist or you, you're no longer a cessationist. No, we're not talking like some trivial issue here. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. This is, this is, these are the fundamentals of the faith. So anyhow, that's what I got to say about this. I was going to make a quick video and here we are 15 minutes into it. I always appreciate you guys watching, leaving comments, and please comment and tell me what you think about Michael Brown saying that original sin, three acts of imputation, and substitutionary atonement are no longer necessary to preach or believe to be a Christian.